Jumping right into it with Matt Michaels here from KTGR. Matt, how's it doing radio during a pandemic? How have you been able to to create all this content when uh, when sports were gone for all those all those months? Uh, dumb luck. I mean, maybe that's it more than anything else. It, it's the same world everywhere, right? In the world of sports, we just kind of find the things that happen. And a lot of times for the past several months, it's been, well, a, a virus outbreak has happened somewhere or it hasn't, or somebody thinks they'll deal with this in the fall. And now the fall is finally here and we got some games back. So uh, I think that that's a positive for everybody who's involved with the world of sports, the concept that we're getting games back across the wide spectrum and especially in college sports we have that and now we just get to wait and see if it goes off without a hitch or if they're going to be snags like so many of the other leagues and sports across the country have seen once or twice in trying to get back up well on Thursday night we know we're going to get some NFL football the uh, defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs are going to start the season off against the Houston Texans what do you think of the matchup of course it's a a playoff rematch, but uh, two of the highest paid players now in the NFL going at it at the quarterback position. Yeah, and uh, I guess this is what the NFL would like, right? A retribution opportunity for Houston and Kansas City, knowing that that was the game that really launched them on this comeback Kings trail to a Super Bowl last season. A lot of people didn't see it as possible when Houston had their opportunities uh, right there near the end zone trying to find a way to punch it in and maybe put it to the death and then of course Bill O'Brien made the choices he made and the Kansas City Chiefs did the things they had to do to win. I think the Chiefs stack up this year Andrew as well as anybody else in the AFC at least. I mean think about this Brett Veach was able to for the price of a very good steak dinner at the start of the salary cap deadline clear the decks get everybody he wanted back, and now has the Chiefs set for run it back or, or a Chiefs version two, whatever you want to call it, in a very good position. And I think they've been very smart with who they've decided to target, at least for the long term. They seem to think that the next three to five years is the open window for them. As long as you have Patrick Mahomes, at least these days, you feel you have an open window. So I really like what they've done. They've kept the offense intact defensively. Uh, they might have made a couple of alterations where they thought they could trim some fat. I, I know that some people might miss D Ford, but I don't think the Chiefs are going to miss him very much. And when they get Chris Jones back in the fold and have him uh, as a happy camper in terms of his pay, I think it sets up well for the second year of Steve Spagnuolo's defense to maybe make a little bit of a run and improve on that side of the ball. Is there anybody in the league that, that can keep up with the Chiefs? Who, who would you say is their biggest threat this year to, to ultimately repeat for the title? I think it still has to be the Ravens. Uh, Lamar Jackson does things that no other quarterback in the league really does. Mahomes can kind of do it in spurts, but Jackson being a thousand yard rusher changes the game. And that's why so many defenses had trouble with the Ravens last year. Uh, I like the fact that uh, Baltimore kind of seems like it's on stable footing and in an ironic way, improving the defense might be part of the way to help Baltimore down the stretch because that's been faltered a time or two. Uh, I think the Tennessee is due for a step back. They had a fantastic run in the playoffs last year, but I don't think you can count on that trick working twice. I got to say, Drew Locke in Denver has uh, a lot of weapons now. And if Drew performs at the way that we saw him perform in his junior and senior seasons at Missouri, He's got a chance to make some noise. I don't know if it's enough chance to win the AFC West, but it is enough to be a thorn in the side. And let me put it this way. I wouldn't want to count out Drew Locke if I was any coach in the AFC West or any defensive coordinator especially. You and I have seen it, Andrew. I think the rest of the NFL is seeing it. There might be a little bit of hype surrounding it that's pumping it up too much among some folks who observe the league, but I think he's still very solid, and I think he's going to be a problem for Kansas City for some years to come. Definitely looking forward to, to the Chiefs' season this year. Uh, I've been having fun watching the NBA playoffs. Two local guys, Michael Porter Jr., OG, and Anobi. Of course, Anobi hit that game winner the other night for Toronto. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, if you had to pick one of them on your team in the playoffs right now, who you got? Mm, 
That's such a difficult decision because I was thinking to myself the other day, which one of these guys is going to end up in five or 10 years and be the bigger name across the NBA? And I think the upside is with Michael Porter Jr. The skills that he provides, the ball handling ability, the chance to shoot the three is what you want in a modern NBA player. And oh yeah, he can clean stuff up the rim. Uh, I think back to, uh, I think it was uh, the game seven in which uh, Michael was cleaning up the glass. It was either game six or game seven for Denver. He's shown the ability to do that a time or two. He doesn't do all the little things right now, though, and that's what OG Ananobi seems to do. He seems to have a greater defensive awareness on the floor. He's been able to hit the clutch shot, as we saw, uh, that Toronto absolutely had to have. So I think right now, OG might be more of a nuanced different maker, difference maker to find his niche. But when Michael breaks out, uh, he is one of the more dynamic players in the league in his class. And I think we'll see that over time. So right now, it might be OG for what the Raptors want to do. Over the long haul, I still think that Michael has the potential for the greatest star power and the most lasting impact in terms of being a brand name in the NBA. Definitely fun to see two of those guys that both of us got to cover in high school now make a name for themselves on the on the big stage. Well, We'll, we'll finish out with some baseball here. The Cardinals in second place in the NL Central. Do you think that's where they're going to finish or are one of these bottom feeders in the NL Central going to make their way up and maybe knock off the Cardinals? Well, I think the Cardinals have a leg up by dint of what they've been able to do this weekend against the Cubs. They have a ton of doubleheaders to come and sweeping a doubleheader was important against Chicago yesterday. And I feel like the Cardinals could even make it as simple as this. And it's not an easy thing to do. But if you sweep all your double headers the rest of the way, you've gotten yourself within your division a huge leg up on Milwaukee because you have a couple against them. Uh, you've got one against Pittsburgh to come, uh, Minnesota, uh, Detroit. I mean, these are all gettable. If you did that alone, you could find your way to 500 in the rest, and you'd be very easily, I think, in the MLB playoffs. And maybe even you'd find yourself into one of those uh, seven or eight seeds, if you will, the first or second wild card. I don't think that's likely if the Cardinals just play 500 ball the rest of the way. They've got to make a little bit of hay. The good thing for them is they've got these double headers in which they can work. But it's going to be such a grind, Andrew, uh, to have a bullpen and pitching staff to hold up over this next stretch is going to be very, very difficult. Um, I think they're probably ticketed for second place. It might be a second place above 500, and they, sure, and they certainly hope that they can be the four seed and get three games at home if necessary in that first round of these new expanded playoffs. But I still think the Cubs have enough in the tank once they get towards the finish. Uh, I don't think the Cards can catch them unless they do uh, just a lot of work against their divisional foes and see the Cubs falter. But sweeping double headers is going to be the way for the Cardinals to make the playoffs. And if they fail to do it, or heaven forbid, get swept in a few of them, then all of a sudden they're in the danger. So it can turn on the, on the head of a pin for St. Louis right now. 